Hey guys and welcome to an introduction to Logic Pro X or Pro 10 depending on how you want to call it. In this video I'm just going to go over the absolute basics to Logic and how to use it and if you already know how to do that then there's no point watching this and just skip to the next one. So first I'm going to show you how to open it up once you've got it installed. Um, click on Finder and go to Applications. I'll mention now that it's a Mac program so I'll be doing it on a Mac. Um, just navigate to Logic Pro 10 here in your applications and just double click that to open it and it should pop up in your bar at the bottom here and you just have to wait for that to load. There we go, you should get the little loading screen and it will search for any plugins you've got so if you've got things like Contact or East West or like any libraries or things that go through Logic that will sort of find them and ask you if you want them for example and usually if you've not used it before then it will come up and ask you um, what you want but for me I've obviously used it quite a lot so it opens my most recent project so whichever way I'm going to start with a new one here and yes I want to get, close that nope don't do it <laughs> right so this is what you should get when you get a new project you'll have the option of either loading a software instrument which is kind of they give you samples or MIDI instruments that you can play through. Uh, an audio track, so that's if you wanted to record something or import an audio file that you've already got. A drummer, which is a sort of logic specific spe feature where you can insert loops and sort of change how the drummer plays depending on what kind of genre you're writing for. External MIDI, you probably don't need to worry about. And guitar or bass is the same as an audio track, but with settings for virtual amps and things like that. So basically for this demo we're going to select software instrument and we just want one for now and just click create. And so that brings you straight up with the track here. And the classic electric piano is the default you'll always get. But if you see here on the left hand side you can go through and choose an instrument that you might like. There's various things, whatever you want. We'll just go for a normal piano, that's easy. When you come into Logic, your main section here is called your Arrange Area. This bit here, the little grey box at the top, is your Toolbar. And this part is your Inspector and this is the Library of Sounds. And you can sort of use that to resize them however you might want them if they take up too much space. Or if you've got multiple screens. I haven't. Um, and also here you've got these options so you can scroll through media you might have markers that you've set in your track look through the tempo although you can also access that here time signatures etc when you look at a track like this you've also got in the inspector the option for MIDI effects and these are things like arpeggiators and modulators so they're things you can add to your MIDI that will change how it's played and here you've got channel strip settings and these are you can either go through and find plugins like waves is a really 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 good one reactor whatever these kind of things or you can look at any kind of plugin you might think of to do with production or mixing and you can import any of your own as well so for example we've got amps delay distortion, dynamics, which are things like compressors, which are really important tools, EQ, which is something you're definitely going to end up using, filters, blah, 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 etc. You can see the list. Um, most instruments have their own preset um, channel strip settings. You can either turn them off by clicking the little icon there, or you can get rid of them completely, or you can use them, depending on if you like their presettings. I generally don't use the presets too much because I like to do my own thing and not have like a, a library sounding track like everyone else. See, anyone can load in a preset sort of setting, but you can take take the ones they have and adapt them as to how you might like them. I mean, for example, when you look at the EQ here, there's nothing actually on it. It's just loaded that in for you. But yeah. Um, when you're navigating your track, 
a couple of things just to show you how to get started this is your general navigation so you can play your track stop your track go back to the beginning fast forward through bars and go backwards through bars and of course the unimportant record button if you wanted to record audio you'd click that or if you wanted to record MIDI information so if you've got a MIDI keyboard plugged in ready to go you can click the record button and play in notes so that's quite a simple thing so I'm just going to do that just play some random notes in on my MIDI keyboard you can see the metronome comes on straight away and gives you a countdown um, I'm going to turn that off and the countdown's up to you whether you want that or not so here's just like so we've got that and we can press either this or spacebar to stop it again and also I mentioned there's plenty of keyboard shortcuts that are preset in logic or you can change them to have whatever you prefer I use spacebar for stopping and starting it just because it's easier so you've got that in there see I've got a random note I'm gonna put these notes just on the first bar there so that I can have it right on the beginning and say we've got a two bar loop there this little function you can set your locators by dragging them as such to change how big a loopable section so say you had four bars that's perfect but we've only got two bars here or we could make it even shorter Oh, I've missed one of the notes there. I've dragged some and not the other. Pop that to the start as well. Right, so this is our two bar section. And because we can turn this on and off by clicking the bar, and you can click play, and it will play your notes that you've recorded in, and it'll keep looping it. So that's really handy if you want to change settings like mixing stuff. You can listen to it live, and it will keep playing it for you for example. Um, turn that off because we don't really need that. <laughs> um, very, very basic stuff. So that's that's easy enough to get you started. Um, if you want to create a new track, you come up to the top here and click track. And again, you've got the options like when we started for audio, software, instrument, drummer, blah, 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 blah. But if you want an option such as the guitar, you might have to come here and you'll get this menu again. And you can have extra details as to what you're using to output and input things. That's very basic. And also, I would recommend looking through the preferences and making sure they're to your liking because you may have an audio interface or speakers or headphones or something that you'd prefer to use that isn't necessarily picked up straight away. So you can change these kind of things. If you go to this menu, for example, if you look in audio, I've got my input and output as my Scarlett 2i2 USB, which is a Focusrite device. Um, so that basically, I can record through a mic straight into Logic, and it also outputs into my headphone jack and to my speakers that I've got. And that's generally what you'd want, because otherwise you're going to end up using the Mac speakers, which it's not going to be the best quality. They're all right, but not for sort of high quality audio listening. You can change things in MIDI, um, go through basically, I don't, know. I, don't, I don't look at most of these things that much, but yeah, and the advanced, well, in the advanced settings I'd recommend enabling everything because otherwise it can get a little bit dumbed down. Something that I really like, if you right click or double click depending on what you're using, like a trackpad, I have to use both of my fingers, um, you can customise your control bar and display and so you can view any of these controls or make them as you like. These ones are particularly helpful because if you click OK, sometimes logic isn't preset but if you put a set of notes in for example it tells you there that that's a d5 chord um just at the top there i have to lift here and if you're not and it'll always tell you what note you're pressing and which section of the keyboard as in like one or two or three and then again it will go back to nothing and it also tells you 
the beats and bars and the tempo and the time as to how long your track is as to where you are in the track you can zoom out this way if you've got a really zong zong or if you've got a lot of tracks stacked up you might want to zoom that in and out to look at them or it can be really helpful if you've got audio if you want to look at it like that Ooh, whoa, oh sorry that was that accident um to open up this bottom bit you double click the section that you've got or you can press p that opens up piano roll you can drag that up a little bit just to look at the midi information um, you've got options here such as the little pencil to put midi in but i'll go through that in more detail at a later stage you've got your score so if you wanted to export that as a pdf or something like that like or you can print screen the music if you wanted to give it to someone who's playing for you you can do that in various view it in various forms there that looks best i think um, and the step editor so that's for extra midi information that's not just the notes um so if you exported it as a midi file you would keep this midi information there's also um if you click this you can also see the sig time signature and the tempo the same as you could in these lists and you can add markers which is quite handy if you want to skip between parts of your track or label kind of where the verse or the chorus is also to get automation up you can press a and these are things that are same as the kind of midi information but you can automate any of your channel strip settings so if you wanted to have a filter sweep you might um, change an eq value through that or you might want to compress things differently in different parts of the track and you can edit that any part here so like if i wanted to automate the volume for example i'm just going to put the pencil there um this is my right click here so i can change that cursor to a pencil when i right click and i've edited a point there and say i wanted it to fade out i'll put another point here and press a again to return to the normal view and of course if you drag through your chat you can see it moving here and in the mixer here because it's automated i think that's probably enough for your first time using logic and hopefully that's enough to get you started and a general introduction as to what it does and how it can help you as i go further on into logic i'm going to approach it from writing music for games that kind of a position but at the moment it's just going through the very basic steps to get you used to the software if you've never used it before or if you're completely new to writing music on a computer that's also cool so hopefully that was enjoyable and here you can go to the next part of my video and watch the next step and hopefully learn lots about logic thank you very much for watching and i hope that's been helpful bye